It's a Veggie BLT PETA! Welcome to It's a Veggie BLT PETA, which stands for I totally suck at video games, but love to play them anyway. And uh, about five years ago, I made a video on the top 10 Otome games in English. But um, back then, of those 10 games, only three were actually Otome games, because they were the only three Otome games actually out in the US at the time. But since that video, game companies have realized people will pay money for Otome games. And that's when this happened. And so my Otome game collection grew from those three games to this huge plethora of games that you see on the table before you. And there's even a couple of games that are download only that I don't have physical boxes for. I thought it was time to make an updated best Otome games in English list. So that's why we now have the 2020 edition. Because there has been such a deluge of new Otome games, I've got a few more rules for my, uh, my top 10 list this time. Rule number one is an obvious one that hasn't changed in that the game has to be translated and localized into English. Rule number two is that they have to be available on consoles or handhelds. I do not count games that are only on PC or only on mobile. I am a console whore at heart. Rule number three is that it has to be fully voiced. This cuts out a lot of the mobile game ports you can find on the uh, eShop or the PlayStation Network. And guess what? This list is just my opinion. My top 10 Otome games in English. You can have your own opinion. You could hate the games that I love. That's okay. But hopefully you watch the video anyway. Seven Scarlet. I'll be honest, the art in this game is okay. I mean, it's not bad. There's a couple of weird CGs or just awkward angles. The background art is nice. The character art is give or take. I don't hate it, but it's not something that enticed me to buy the game. The actual draw of Seven Scarlet is the overarching mystery that slowly unfolds as you go through each character's route. You actually have to play the game in a certain order to unlock the whole mystery, which means certain love interests get a little bit more screen time than others, but they all have a good balance of romance in their story arc. The love interests themselves come in many shapes and sizes, so you're bound to find at least one that you like. The gameplay is standard visual novel gameplay, um, so nothing special there, but nothing bad either. The heroine isn't great. <laughs> she is pretty much your typical naive tries to do well but is kind of dumb in a blank slate heroine. And when she does try and do things on her own, it's usually not for the better of anyone. All in all, it's a pretty good Otome game, but I was definitely more in it for the mystery than the actual romances, which is why it's number 10 on the list. As for best boy, I'm gonna maybe say Hino. Um, none of the none of the love interests like really grabbed me, but Hino's route was cute and he seemed like the most plausible match for Ichika, I guess. So that's my pick. Nor9 Var Commons. The art's good in this one. I'm gonna be honest, the art in all of the rest of my picks are good. None of them are as questionable like uh, Seven Scarlet. Um, the story and romance balance, well, it's, it's a little different in this game because there's actually three heroines that each have three love interests, which of course each have their own story arcs to go through. And yet somehow they balance it pretty well. The stories are probably a little shorter than most Otome games because there are so many of them, but you still get a sense of some kind of completion of an arc for each love interest. As for the love interests, um, because there's so many, you're gonna find at least one or two that you like. You may not like any in one specific heroine's picks, but you'll at least find a couple in the whole game that you'll be into. Gameplay, this one's another typical visual novel, so nothing to complain about there. Because there are three heroines, uh, you're gonna probably have one at least you like, maybe two you like. They act differently. They, I mean, there are some similarities because, you know, they are the romance interest, but each of them has their own specific personality, which was a nice change to some of the Otome game love interests that you play as. I'll be honest, there were a lot of weird plot holes or plot twists and kind of some confusing stuff going on, including like another player character that wasn't the hero that is like maybe your character. I don't know how to explain it. So I wasn't completely sold on the plot and story overall, 
but I did have fun with all the romances, so I do suggest it for that. I guess this is part of like a bigger franchise, but the only thing over here is the anime and this specific game. And if that's all we got, I'm just gonna have to deal with the confusion. As for best boys, uh, for Koharu, I would say Kakeru is best boy. For Mikoto, I would say Itsuki is best boy. And for Nanami, I'd say Akito is best boy. Hakuoki, Kyoto wins, and Edo blossoms. The art, of course, is beautiful. As for the balance between story and romance, this one is number eight for a reason. There is a lot more story than there is romance. And that's good for some people, and that's probably why Hakuoki was one of the first Otome games brought over to the US. But for me, I need a balance that maybe even skews higher towards romance for me to really enjoy an Otome game. Like, the story has to be good, and Hakuoki's stories for all of the love interests are good, but there's just too much of it. <laughs> it's kind of tedious to go through so much text of story before you can get to the next tiny little romance beat. As for love interests, there's too many of them. <laughs> the original Hakuoki had six options. Uh, the Kyoto Winds and Edo Blossoms uh, duology has 12 love interests to play through, and you have to go through both games to get their complete story. So that's 12 characters over two games worth of romance and story. That's a lot. I mean, it's good because, hey, there's gonna be someone for you and it's gonna last you a long time, but it's bad because the main story, at least for the beginning, is kind of the same for all of them and uh, that gets a little tedious to go through as well. Gameplay is typical visual novel. Once again, no complaints. The heroine, she's not as bad as Ichika from Seven Scarlet, but she's nothing to write home about either. There's some good initiatives she takes, like trying to find her father and, you know, disguising herself as a boy, but she doesn't really do too much useful after that. Hakuoki is kind of a otome classic. It's Shinsengumi, it's samurai, it's dark. Uh, yeah, I may not have mentioned that. Not a lot of people's stories end happily because uh, like real history says, the Shinsengumi didn't win. <laughs> but despite that, the game is still definitely worth playing and worth having. Uh, my best boy of the ones I've played so far is Harada, mostly because he has a happier ending. <laughs> there may be somebody else I like better, but I've only gone through like six of the love interests and I had to take a break. I'll get back to it eventually, but more Otome games keep coming out, so I keep having less excuse to actually get back to uh, Hakuoki. Psychedelica of the Ashen Hawk. The art is stylized in this one, but I like the style, so I'm a big fan. As for the story and romance balance, I say it's good because there are a lot of romantic moments, with the caveat that there is a canon route, which kind of takes away from the romance options with the other characters. The story is cool, has some confusing bits, and gets a little tragic, but it's definitely worth playing through the game and getting to the canon ending to see how it all pans out. As for love interests, I liked the ones that they gave, but there aren't a lot of them. But there is still some variety in the love interests, just maybe not as much as other Otome games. There is a little bit of extra gameplay in this. It's not just visual novel. You also have to decide to go to certain locations and like dig up extra information before you can advance the plots, which is kind of neat. It adds a little bit of interactivity to a normally static gameplay style. Speaking of the heroine, Jed is awesome. She's probably my favorite Otome game heroine. She's assertive. She tries her best. She can fight. She's, she's just all around cool, even though half the time people think she's a dude. But that's for plot reasons and it works. Psychedelica of the Ashen Hawk has some connections to Psychedelica of the Black Butterfly, but you don't necessarily have to have played one to play the other. It just has some bonus content that you'll be like, oh, I know who that is. It can get pretty dark uh, and it doesn't always end happily. Even some of the happy endings of the romance have some bitter sweetness to them. If you're into kind of gritty fantasy novels, um, this is probably more up your speed. It's not like high fantasy with elves or anything, but it's got some good fantasy elements elements and just a good story overall. My best boy is Levon because damn he's a really caring older brother trope type. Amnesia Memories
So this game was actually out when I made my video five years ago, but I hadn't played it. But I've played it now, and it made its way up the list. The art is another one that's really stylized, but I think it's really good looking as well. As for the story and romance balance, uh, it does a good job. It leans more towards romance than story, which I'm okay with. Um, the only thing that was kind of sad was each character's route is completely dependent from the other characters. Um, in a lot of Otome games you get to mix and match with the other characters and, and get along with everyone. In Amnesia Memories it's boom, you just pick a route and you're on that character's route and maybe the other characters will show up but you're not going to interact with them much at all. But there's a lot of romance specific to each character to kind of balance that, so it works. The love interests are all different enough that you're gonna find at least one you like. Plus there's a secret route to unlock that may not be to everyone's tastes, but hey, it's nice to have kind of a completion bonus. The gameplay is another standard visual novel one, so I'm cool with that. The heroine, she's not great. She's a, well, she's literally a blank slate since she has amnesia, but for some reason she has to hide that she has amnesia and it doesn't always work very well and she doesn't always make great decisions or any decisions. She just kind of goes along with what her love interest is doing and their story. She's not the worst, but she's just really blank. That's the best way to explain it. I played Amnesia a long time ago, so I don't remember everything, but I remember enough for me to put it this high up on the list. Um, there's some dark stuff going on and some interesting treatment of the heroine from some of the love interests that may not jive with everyone, but I'd say give it a go anyway. My best boy is Toma, because, spoilers, sometimes I like a little yandere. Pio Fiore, Faded Memories. It has great character art. Just look at it. It's cool. Pio Fiore is rated M for a reason. It's not for everybody, but if you like mafia storylines and you can handle some not great things happening, it's pretty damn cool. And the balance of romance to story is actually really good. As you keep going through the story, the love interest gets a lot closer with the heroine and everything is intertwined nicely and you feel the romance and I was happy with the balance. The love interests are different personality wise. These are mature men who are part of the crime business. For the most part, they are all involved in the mafia. So they aren't sunshine and happiness, but that can be good. Gameplay, like most of these games, is a standard visual novel. Um, the heroine in this game is okay. She was basically raised as an orphan in a church, so it makes sense some of the decisions she makes. So I don't really have too big a complaint on her. She's not my favorite, but I don't actively dislike her either. I'm a fan of Mafia stuff, so I liked Pio Fiore. There's a lot of dark endings, and even some of the best endings have a tinge of bittersweetness to them. There's some cool story in there though, and playing through each route will help unveil a little bit more of what's going on. I recommend it, but only if you can handle the actual mature aspect of the story. My best boy was a toss up. Um, I was originally gonna say Nicola, but I have to go with Gilbert, mostly because he mentioned Chicago and how he came from there, and hey, gotta root for the hometown. Plus he's actually a really cool character, so he does win out overall. Nightshade. Look at the art. It's pretty. That's all I have to say. Uh, the story romance balance does a pretty good job. You get to know all of the characters in the beginning and then split off on their individual roots, but they still do a good job balancing some romance spots in the beginning, even though it could be anybody's game at that point. The stories themselves, some of them overlap, some of them don't, which was a little confusing, um, and some of them work out better than others, but each of them does have a hefty dose of romance thrown in. As for the love interests themselves, there's a lot of variety in the five love interests, so you're gonna find at least one that you like. Actually, come to think of it, with uh, with this game, I liked all of the love interests. That doesn't always happen, it's a kind of a rarity, but Nightshade is one of them. As for gameplay, as mentioned with most of these, it's a standard visual novel. The heroine is actually pretty cool in this game. She has some pretty cool skills since she was trained as a ninja, um, and she doesn't always make the best decisions, but doesn't always cause people harm either. Like, she tries her best as she was trained. Sometimes that doesn't work out, but you can kind of see why she's choosing that in almost all the routes. There's a couple routes where she just plays the damsel in distress, but it still works okay. I gotta say, this is another one that kind of has some darkness to it. People die, and in fact, uh, spoilers, in two of the routes, 
main characters die. So I was not prepared for that when I played this game. So I wanted to let you guys know before you decide to play it to uh, be careful of who you get attached to. <laughs> there are some good happy endings in this game, but some of the uh, roots, the happy ending is a sad ending. So be prepared for that. I still recommend it, but be prepared. Uh, my best boy has got to be Goemon, because he has a good ending. He's a happy-go-lucky kind of guy, but with a heart of gold. Also, I have a soft spot for Hikaru Midorikawa, the voice actor, so hey, that's my choice. Café Enchanté. I really like the whole vibe of this one. It just seemed nice, and the art worked really well with that. As for the story and romance balance, it does great. Uh, this is another one that actually skews probably more towards romance than story. And this is another one where the more you play, the more you're going to learn about the final ending. Because one of the endings unlocks after you beat the other four roots. Each of the boys has a story that does separate from the main path, but you learn things about different characters along the way that kind of help you relate to them in the other roots. The love interests are unique. I mean, they have some typical Otome tropes to them, but they make it work for them and they're not just their trope. And they're all so fun! Gameplay is another typical visual novel. I liked the heroine in this game. She is a normal person. She's an overworked office lady who gets the chance to run her late grandfather's cafe and she decides to go for it, but she gets thrown into all this supernatural stuff even though she's just a normal human, but she rolls with it and handles it kind of like how a regular person would. Because of that, you can excuse some of the poor decisions she makes because she doesn't know any better. She's not a supernatural being. I was expecting a super happy, light, and fluffy Otome game from this one. I didn't get that. This game got a lot deeper and a little darker than I was expecting from such like a happy opening and the title Café Enchanté. Like there's a lot of tragedy in these boys' lives. Things don't always end up super happy for everyone, but it was nice to go through the journey with them and I would definitely recommend it. Despite having so many supernatural love interests to choose from, my best boy is actually the normal human, uh, Rindo. He was like half playboy, but also kind of overprotective older male, and I vibed with that. Collar X Malice. Collar Cross Malice. Collar whatever you want to call it. It's a good game, and it has some great art, as you can see. The story and romance balance each other very nicely. There are times when it is more story focused, but that's okay because there's mysteries to be solved with time limits on them. Not like actual time limit, like you don't have like only 60 minutes to play, but in the game there's a time limit for when things have to be solved. So when it concentrates on that, it kind of skews a little away from the romance, but that's okay because then there are moments where the romance is more heavy than the story. As for the love interests, this is another one that has a lot of different tropes covered. You're gonna find one that you're gonna like. The gameplay has a little added minigame kind of thing where there are moments when you pretty much have to do a quick time event to shoot something. And if you fail, it sure does affect the story, so I hope you're good at quick time events. The heroine is great in this game. Uh, she is a police officer, but she also is trying to do her best to calm people down because some bad stuff happened. And so she has like a little bit of a naive but innocent personality where she believes everything can be okay as long as people are nice to each other. But she also isn't afraid to confront people if that's what's needed in order to make things better. Sometimes with a gun. <laughs> This is another one that's a little bit on the dark side, to be honest. Uh, people get murdered, sometimes a lot of people. And there's a lot of fun moments too, where they're all just kind of hanging together. And you get a lot of good interactions that bring some levity to some of the darker moments of the game. I definitely recommend this one. I mean, it is number two on my list after all. I don't really have too many caveats. Like I said, it is a little bit more mature. It does have some dark themes to it, but all in all, I think it's enjoyable for pretty much everyone. It's got a good heroine, it's got some great love interests, and it's got a compelling story. It's, it's a win. My best boy is Okazaki. He's super overprotective, and sometimes that's fun. <laughs> As a side note, this game does have a sequel, like a fan disc sequel called Color X Malice Unlimited, that goes even deeper into the characters and their relationships and their pasts. That may have colored me on my rating of this because I did play that, so I learned even more. I don't care, I recommend that too. So if you liked the first game, definitely buy the Unlimited sequel and play that as well. 
Code Realize Guardian of Rebirth. The art is great. I have zero complaints about any of the character designs. It's all unique and it's all beautiful. The story and romance balance out great. There's a longer common route, so you get to interact and know all the characters very well before you go to the individual route with them. But it works out well in this one because they're also introducing you into this fantastical steampunk metal London world. There is more romance once you split off to your individual love interest and follow that ending, but there's enough romance overall that I really didn't have any complaints about it. The love interests themselves are great. Once again, they cover pretty much all the tropes you could want. You may love some more than others, but there wasn't a love interest I didn't like. And as mentioned before, that's kind of a rarity. Usually there's at least one that I'm kind of like, meh, not really a fan, but I'll play through it just to get their story. No, all of these guys were great. The gameplay is your typical visual novel, but it's a good way to play the Otoma games. The heroine is pretty cool. You would think she would be like the blank slate kind of girl because she's had like this kind of weird past. You'd have to play the game to figure it out. But she still has a bit of a personality and she's not useless. She can fight. Basically she has like acidic blood and skin due to certain circumstances, which can be useful in certain situations. She's not my favorite heroine ever, but I liked her. There's a lot of fantastical elements and interesting story arcs that this game goes through. And the good thing about Code Realize is that they all have good endings. Um, I mean, there are, you know, the tragic endings you can get, but the good endings you get for all of them are actually happy endings. And I was like, yay, I'm okay with this. It's a happy ending. So great romance, fun story, happy endings. That's why Code Realize is my number one Otome pick, at least as of 2020. As for Best Boy, this was the hardest one to decide. I honestly, I can't, I can't decide between my two favorites. So because it's number one, it gets two best boys. We got Impei because he's just such a cute playboy, Genki, naive, nice guy. And we get Van Helsing because he's the brooding, overprotective, self-sacrificial guy. And you know what? I like both of those and this game gave me both, so yay! Like Color X Malice, Code Realize actually has two fan disc sequels, so you get to learn even more about these boys. You get to see what happens after the story and see even happier endings. There's like a Christmas special one that's like super cute. It adds one extra love interest and one kind of family happy ending. Like this shit's good. If you like Otome games, you're probably gonna like Code Realize. So you should probably save up your money and buy those sequels as well and just just have yourself a merry code realized time. So those are my top 10 Otome games as of 2020. Um, Axis already announced that they're like releasing three more Otome games in 2021. So this list will soon become outdated once those come out. But I wanted to make a refresh of my original video because Hot damn, there were like no Otome games out by then. I was reaching, I was stretching, I put in Dragon Age for goodness sake, and there were like three options, I think. <laughs> it's not an Otome game, it's not even close to an Otome game, but I had to do something. I was a fan and I wanted to make a video about Otome games, hoping that more were gonna come. And they did, and it was wonderful. Maybe in another five years I'll make another video with totally different games on the list. There were a lot of games that did not make the cut, that doesn't mean they're not good. Honestly, I have not hated any of the Otome games I've played that I bought. They've all been decent in one way or another. These are just the best of the best, of course. That wraps it up for this video. You've seen my top 10? You can tell me yours in the comments, or you can yell at me for not having good taste, or you can commend me for my amazing taste, because I know that's the truth. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I'm gonna sign off and go play some more games. It's a veggie BLT pita. I totally suck at video games, but love to play them anyway.